tools to create different style and mood. So uh, that's some of my work. So when you work with the agencies, you are not satisfying yourself only for the results. You need to be, uh, you need to satisfy even the director, the client, the clients of the clients. So we have like big chain of people judging your work. Oh, we need this, we need that. And at the end, you have to create your own style. So it's a big challenge. Commercial photographer is like more, he's not only photographer. He's a PR person. He is an accountant. He, he chases the money. He, for example, if I have a shoot, I have like 10 people around me, and everybody should be happy there. Should be happy with the photographer and director, who is me. I need to, some, some, uh, some shoots I deal with kids which is very difficult to make them work with you. Um, uh, when I started, as I said, I did some, you know, normal street shots, but I love to shoot in environments. I like to show my portrait of the person in his environment, what he's doing. So this is what I think it's called lifestyle. Uh, always chasing the perfect life, and travel uh, if I don't have control. So this is number one. I want to control my environment in commercial photography. There is no chance today if we go out in the desert, for example, shoot something, and the weather is uh, not good, or we don't have, it's cloudy, and I, and I need the sunlight. So I need to control my situation, save the shoot. I need to make sure that everybody is happy with my results. Uh, again, some of my work, my previous work, which is not published. Uh, I started even in travel to take my small light with me, my speed light. For example, this shot. This was done 10, 11 years back. So I took my speed light and tried to create some mood in my shot. So I went my, with a with, uh, uh, French photographer, my friends, and they shot the same shot, but my shot was different. I have dramatic sky because I use PG light. I'll go back to like different photos and I'll explain it. Same thing when I have, uh, you know, uh, photography is on, it's light, it's about, uh, it's lighting. We are recording light. So if I can control the light, I can't do anything in my shot. This is the main idea of what I'm doing. And at this time, 10 years back, uh, it's uh, almost no one's using studio lights outside. So I got this unique look in the, my area and around my fellow photographers. So why studio lights? Again, we'll say I want to stay in control. I have different look in colors and detail. Uh, believe me, if I use my normal camera and lens, even if I'm in the good shutter speed, the sharpness is different than when we, I use the studio light. I have more details, better color. This is for my personal taste. It doesn't mean it's a rule. So you can go out and shoot with natural light. It's not uh, wrong. But as I told you, I want to control my environment. Uh, freedom to paint with light. And we have a time saving in big production. So in some of the shots we will display later, I'll show you that how I can create different look and more details and paint with light to create a unique final artwork. Now let's take this shot as an example. I shot it in location. Uh, it was during one of the workshops. Uh, it looked good. Everything is okay. Uh, I could go, both go back and push the shadows and post-processing, but I decided to use couple of lights and create different, uh, you know, what we call, everybody's calling high dynamic range photos. So I use one light from here and the other one from front to eliminate and get more dramatic look. Uh, some people, they call 3D look or doesn't, you can call it anything. Uh, to be in control, I have, uh, I receive, you know, a lot of uh, a brief from my agencies which I work with. For example, they send me all this list. They want the look of the photos. 
sketches, so I have to recreate it and uh, re recreate the scene which they want. The same thing here. So I'm going quickly on this as an example. So in this shot, even this shot, I created my light around this main model, then I shot the people in the background. And of course, we multi-layer in Photoshop. I'm going to show you again another example with all details. Uh, OK, let's talk about lighting. So how many of you here you is using CD light or any kind of lighting? Good. So I have more people with natural light. I'll change you today. Uh, so we have different uh, lighting uh, uh, equipment. We have the speed light, which you, are, you can use this on your camera or sometimes off camera. You have uh, strobes, and you have off camera flash. It's a new generation, came out the last two years from Profoto and other companies, which is battery operated and uh, outside the camera. And we have the uh, power pack. I'll go through them quickly because Many people think this is a battery. It's not a battery. And this is, is the studio flash. Basically, I mean, this power, they call it power pack or generator, but, uh, not battery, generator. We, we connect, connect it to the power outlet, and we have different, more pro, faster flash system. It's more advanced. But today, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about studio light, the mono light. So, any question about the difference? Any, anybody saw something? He don't know what is it? So we'll talk about mainly studio lighting in any kind. I will not talk about speed light because speed light is, I struggled with speed light. If anybody, how many of you are using speed light as a studio? OK, you have many problems. You have the battery problem, recycling time. So when you click in full power, the, the speed light takes maybe five seconds to recycle. And sometimes you cannot mount it easily in the softbox or something to modify the light. And speed light is square. I mean, the source output is square shape. So it will not give you the natural look of the sunlight, which is round. So this is quickly, because sometimes we take more than like you know, one hour talking about different type of speed you like. <coughs> Sorry. And let's go back. So we have the speed you like. And we, we use modifiers to shape the light coming out from the strobe or the speed you like. Uh, many, many times from people, they call me, I want to buy a softbox. And what he mean, he, he means that you want to buy a speed you like with the softbox. So the softbox is the modifier which will be mounted on the drop or studio light. We have different light shaping tools and in Profoto or any company. So what is the difference between reflectors, umbrellas, softboxes, and the shape of softboxes? Studio light uh, shooter, what do you prefer? Softbox or umbrella? <coughs> reflector or reflector with the grid? So many photographers, they think it's umbrella is old style photography and the softbox is the new. And they don't want to use the reflectors because they give hard light. So think about these tools as your brushes. So you have small brush to paint, for example, the painter. You have small brushes, you have wider brushes, you have big brush to create different effects of the light or the paint, painting itself. It's the same thing with the studio light. If I want to get soft light, I should have big brush, big source of the light. So the size is very important if I want to I, ha I, I need to have intense light in some spot area. I use smaller reflector. So it's all about your style. And there is nothing called wrong lighting. It's your style. 
we'll go through. Let's take this shot, for example. This shot was snot. And we have, uh, there is, I did this test. So we have the subject distance two meter from the camera, from the uh, mannequin. So the light source was here, two meter. And the same setting for the coming side. So we have snoot, which is this side. And we change it to reflector, which is a little bit bigger. See, I mean, big difference. Then we replace it with softbox. So three different look from three different modifiers. And we have like over 120 modifiers, for example, from uh, manufacturers. And there is another thing I use, which is the grid. For example, if there is a grid, it's um, like a honeycomb. They, we use, usually use it on the reflectors. And there is the same thing for softboxes. Uh, what they do is they are minimizing the light spread. For example, if I have the light here without anything, so it will spread. We have beam from the center, and we have light spread everywhere. If I want to restrict my lighting where it's land, where the spotting, so I have to use the grid. So later, if I will use grid in front of you, so at least you know what is it. Any questions for now? I saw all. So for example, here you, we have it without grid. I use 20 degree grid. So you can see how I respect the light around it. And you can see the shadow becoming darker and higher contrast. Then we have 10 degree de grid. Again, see the light spread, smaller, and five degree grid. So what is the number? 20, 10, five, 30 degree. It's how the light is restricted. So for example, for 10 degree, if the light is, let's say, 90 degree spreading, I'm restricting it to 10 degree. So when you buy your grid next time, Think about this. Smaller numbers, it means more restriction, more spot. Higher contrast, higher saturation, always. And let's talk about light quality. Uh, how you can read the light? What, what is the difference between photo A and photo B? It's the light quality. Uh, it's not, let's go to this shot as an example. So both shots. Mm, they are both good shots out from the camera, no researching. So we have here hard light and we have soft light. How we can define hard and soft light? It's exactly, I mean, the shadows. Look at the shadows under the chin and in the background. This is a good ex example to explain. And we have here, we use the soft box. So we have softer shadow edge transition. So it is softer than the other one. If I want to make it more, like, you know, softer more than the other one, I will use bigger source of light. So if you have big source of light and closer to your subject, it will be softer, and the shadows almost will be eliminated. So it's all about your style of photography. Some photographers, they love this effect, and some, they love it. Intensity of the light, uh, amount of light of we are using. The front light in both shots is the same. But we change the background in this light, and we increase it in the second shot. And I'm getting completely different look in each shot. So more power in the background, it changed everything. Completely different look. And you decide which one you like, not me. Uh, direction of the light, this is very important. Uh, some people, they love the shadows in their shot and some they don't like. So for example, here, the light direction is almost from the side, but it's highlighting the front, and we have a little bit of the shadow here. Once I took it two feet this side, I'm having more dramatic look and more shadows. So it's about your mood, it's about the shoot mood. If she's happy, it's a happy shot, I want to 
show how it is fresh, for example, shooting for cosmetic and uh, beauty. So usually the people like it fresh and uh, with less shadows. If I'm doing it like more of fine art, or uh, you know, I want to show the model she's sad, so I go more into the shadows. Uh, again, going back, because I always, this is the most important thing, hard light and soft light. Uh, the same shot, same light position, same direction. I use softbox in this one, and I use zoom reflector here. The reflector I'm going to show you, it's like a simple reflector, which will come on the flash. <clears throat> you can see the shadow under the chin, how it's different. And uh, I believe both shots are okay. No problem with them, but you can see the difference. You can see the detail in the eye. Let's go zoom in more. You can see even the skin is, you can see the texture of the skin. Let's say I, when I'm going to use, when I'm going to use the soft light or the hard light. First, I should think about who I'm shooting. If I'm shooting like, you know, some old guys, I want to show the wrinkles in his face, I will use half that light. If I want to soften the skin and make the Photoshop work and skin retouching easier and not fake, I will use softer light. This is out from the camera, I didn't touch it. I'm going to demonstrate the same thing in the front of you after the break. Closer look, this is the details. You can see the shadows even under the Eyelashes and the same is here. For example, in food photography, we always highlight the food from back with smaller light. If we have a cake with a chocolate powder on it, and I want to show this powder in detail, I will use smaller light. Because if I use bigger one, so it will be like flat brown. Any questions? I saw it. Okay. Distance and shadow size. Think about it like this. If I want to, if I took my light close to the wall, it will create small spot of light and everything will be dark. The same thing with this. If I have my subject here, the light is close to the subject, it will create big shadow, so the background will be darker. If we took it a little bit further, the light will spread more in the background, and it will create smaller shadow in the background. What if we go further away and shoot? So we'll have almost the same size of the subject in the background, and the wall will be highlighted more with the light. But you'll see sharper sh shadows. We are going to demonstrate this better, like practically. Okay, how it is made. So any question before we go to how it's made? Oops, before I share my shoots and behind the scenes? No? Yeah, fahmin, ya mufahmin. Either you understand me or you don't. <coughs> okay, first shot. Uh, how many lights in this? One. It's only one light. Yeah, let's go for the diamond. So this is my setup for this light. So one light source, and we bounce back. We bounce back the light because it's hitting the reflectors. Actually, the reflectors is not this size. It's like you know, it's only one meter size. I use the foam board from the stationery, white, close to the subject, close to the model, and I put the camera through the two panels. So I created this shot with one light. Uh, it's simple setup. I always use it in my workshops I, uh, to show that you can do different look, very bright shot with only one light. Simple. Any questions about it? Yeah, this is the shot. So we have the softbox in the background. And because it's uh, coming uh, in the front of the camera, we have some low contrast, so, and we have highlights from the source here. 
And you can see the eyes, there is two panels here. Always when I want to read which modifier they use, I look at the eye and I see it. Is it uh, round? Is it box? Is it from side? So you can read the light from all of the catch light. We call it catch light. Okay, more interesting shoes coming, by the way. <laughs> we have this job. So let's look at the eye. So we have like round light here, and we have something panel, reflector. But we have, again, light from here, light from here. The light from, we call it rim light or backlight. Let's say call, call it rim light. Uh, you can use different modifier for it. Some, some people, they use the smaller reflector, which will create harder light. And some, they use soft boxes, which is very soft. What I used here is two BTG in the back with grid. OK, how you use BTG in the background? doesn't matter. It's a brush. I use it how I feel to use it. The beauty dish is something between the hard light and the soft light. It have deep shadows with soft edge between the shadow and highlight. Again, we will demonstrate it. So this is the shot setup. In the front, I use a three feet octa, octa box, round one to give me something close to beauty dish. I don't have, I have only two beauty dish, so I use the softbox and phone. No questions? Questions? Well, okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, for this shot, I want to create the softest shadow transition, like almost same as window light. So I use two huge softboxes from the side. So the first soft box is highlighting the face. The second soft box from the same direction is lightening the shadows, making it more, less deep. So if you have large source of light, you have softer light. Softer, so you can see the transition is almost smooth in this camera uh, shot. Uh, about the power, I didn't record the power, but if I'm doing this, usually this one will be the same as the first or a little bit higher because this will, I mean, if the model is standing here, the first softbox will be here, the second one will be further. So I have to increase the power to, it will reach the model, the other side. Okay, for this shot, I use, so it's more, dramatic shot. I use two uh, soft boxes, strip soft boxes from the back. It's exactly how I set up it here. So once the eyes can see the strip box from the side, it will highlight and create. I can do it with the reflector, but it will be too harsh and hard for me to, it's not about the taste, it, it, sorry, it's not the what, what I was brief to do the last. So the same setup done with this one. But same setup exactly where the strip box is, but you can see the background is brighter, and you can see the light is reaching more from the side because I use two five octa, five feet octans from the back. I think these are straightforward. Just you'll see the exact position of the light, and we talk about it. And we have the time. How far? It's almost uh, three to four feet. The power. How I read the power is like, uh, it's not about, if I told you it's 1,000 watts, but my lens opening is 2.8. It's different than if I'm using 500 watts and my lens opening. So later I will demonstrate how I meter the light and how I can get the perfect exposure. So we will talk about it later because it, it's, it's not, there's no rule. Uh, even in, in, in like, you know, natural, natural uh, photography, I mean natural light photography, 
If you ask someone about his sitting, it doesn't mean that you use the same sitting and it will work. But in studio, this kind of shot, always I use, and with the plain background, always I use small lens uh, opening. For example, f8 and more. Because if the model moves like, you know, one centimeter back and forth during the posing, I will not lose the focus point. So I worry about the background if I'm shooting a location or if I have something in the background. So if I want to uh, blur it, for sure I will use 2.8 or 1.8. Uh, okay. And this one in location, I was in Sandstorm, you can see here. Uh, we cannot use like soft boxes or anything. So I, what I use, we have the sunlight from back, so it's highlighting the model. And in front, I use the zoom reflector. This, we call it the reflector. It's easier to move in location because it's smaller and the wind will not blow it. It was afternoon time. I don't remember the time, but it's maybe around 1 or 2 p.m. It was in the desert, 8 degree, with 60 kilometer of wind speed. You can see from the dress. Uh, the, the, the same shot here. What I want to create is like, this was shot early morning around 7 a.m. I'm shooting against the sun, so for sure the model will be in black. Like, she will be silhouette. So I highlighted her from this side with a beauty dish and grid. So why I'm using the grid? Because I don't want to be to over light the ground. So I want to make it natural as possible and to highlight some details on the model. You can see the light here in the hand is more than the body. So that's why I use the grid just to highlight the top body part. The same modifier used in this shot, but without grid. So we have, uh, by the way, these shots, is, which I show you now, is 80, 90% out from the camera. We do, we do just contrast and cleaning up anything we want to clean, like, you know, some spot in the face, and I always try to minimize the Photoshop work, especially for skin. Because if you overdo it, it doesn't mean that if you know how to retouch that you have to retouch every shot. Uh, one example, many people, they do good retouching job and they always zoom in 100% to the photo and everything is perfect when they post it online. With a smaller size, it will look like plastic. So if you are posting your shots always online on Instagram and sharing it, don't bother to retouch a lot. So just clean quickly major things and post it. I mean, check my Instagram. Many people are asking me, what are you using? Your skin is natural. I'm not doing Photoshop. Like, to be honest, I mean, uh, if you look at the, uh, my process, if I show you any files, it's not huge retouching. And uh, we use here beauty dish without any modifier. Uh, sorry, without any grid. Okay, in this shot I used, uh, starting to use mirrorless cameras, so with Sony cameras I was almost on the ground. We used one light for to highlight this shot, and it is, it's called magnum reflector. You can see how the shadow is hard and deep. Uh, this kind of reflector, you can see inside it, it's like mirrors inside. So it will give me something close to sunlight, uh, depend how close it is or how far. If I want to harden the shadows, I will take it further away, more and more. So I'll have like, you know, sharp line of shadows. But uh, in this shot, it was almost, you know, less than two meters. So the same reflector which giving me hard light, if I took it very close to the subject, it won't be hard as if I took it five meters away. If I have big softbox, five octa, and I, you are my model, I keep, I use it this distance from him, it will give me soft light, but it doesn't mean that I have soft box, 10 meters away, it will be soft, because uh, it's related to the 
once it's going further from the eye, it will look smaller. So smaller light, harder shadows and highlights. Uh, this one shot indoors. And it's, it's not a garden in the back. It is a living room. So how I created, we put the smoke machine and we put one magnum reflector from the back so to highlight all this, uh, you know, smoke. And we used another magnum reflector which always giving me hard light. And we have, you know, the effect. It's like, you know, we are painting. Any questions? And this shot done for jewelry. That's why the jewelry are small here, small pieces. So it will show when I have hard shadows and the rest. So always think about what you want to show. If you want to, you don't care about the accessories, you can use soft light. If you want to show it, this is the way. The same thing here. Okay, we talk about solving the problem. We were shooting in this day and we ran out of the time. And we need this shot to be done in daylight. And we are almost half at night. So I created all this at night. The same thing, I was using my favorite two magnum reflector from the back, from outside the room, outside the house. So we blow it, I meter it, everything is perfect. And I use soft, soft box, uh, five octet, very close to the subject. It's almost like, you know, one and a half feet away from the face. Why I use softbox in front? Because we need the fresh morning look, the fresh soft look. So here is where you can know what the mood of the shot you want to show. Is it fresh? Is it dramatic? Then you can decide. So this is how I decide what to use in my uh, flashes as a light modifier. Let's go to more like, you know, funkier shots and Check this color gel. So I use three lights in this one. If we look, we have dark background. Always, if you want to show color gel, use darker background, gray to black. If you put any color gel on it, it will show. If you have white, this white, I mean, it will be more difficult to show the color on it. So we have the red in this wall, the green in this one, and because I'm not using any grid, there was a light spread hitting from here and from here. Let's go back. You can see that there is green from this side. You remember from this side was the green gel hitting that wall, and some of them, some of the light spread is hitting my model. And the same on the opposite side. So I use the red, so you can see the red highlighting the model from the right side. And in front, I used another uh, reflector with the, yeah, I remember, I used 10 degree uh, grid for the face, to highlight the face. Okay, I shot this one in the showroom for one of the commercials. We changed the background, but uh, how I highlighted, I mean, uh, remember that I want to create the daylight. Uh, I mean, we talked about if we do a daylight or hard light. So this is the setup. I use soft box, but I took it a little bit further so it will come through this window. Then we have the strip box was positioned from back. So it will highlight the model from this side. And umbrella from front next to the camera just to fill general interior of the house. And we change the background in Photoshop. So we don't have to drive and try to get the right light. Right light. So it is, this is how I mean about lighting. It will help me to produce the pictures at any time. And Photoshop, sometimes in low budget, we don't have to go to location or we are in short, short in time. So we need to shoot them in clinic. 
and we have the background shot supplied by the client, by the agency, and they want to position them here. If I have the background, then I can figure out how to light my people in this scene. This is the final. So they give me the background, and they want to create them uh, to create the fi final file that they are there. So we have the background shot. There is a large light source. It's a, again, it's a clinic. They want it fresh, not scary. And this is the setup. All soft boxes. So I think about that the light coming from the, let's go back to the shot. So, so we have the light source, natural light source from here. And we have white wall, white ceiling, white desk. Everything is white, so the light will bounce everywhere. It should look soft. So that's why I use softbox from all directions. I have the rim light softbox. Another softbox from side to highlight cell, and I have the bouncing light by softbox. So I'm creating the bounce light from the wall by the softbox. Okay, how many how many CD lights in this? Do you think? Read them. Who can tell me? Including background. Including the background. Three, three, four. Okay. <laughs> Look at the details inside their mouth. It's not HDR. I didn't edit in Photoshop. Like, again, in Photoshop, just we did like some uh, uh, dodging and burning to enhance the shadow and light. But this is this was the sh setup. <laughs> See, I mean, sometimes they have small portraits, like you know, simple portrait. But in this campaign, they wanted more cartoonish, more uh, funnier to show happiness for one of the campaigns, like, yeah, I want something. And we have a strap box, strap soft box for the hair, and two strap soft box for the rim light. This is for the background. And here there was a ring light. It's not soft, because I don't have the, the file to, to, so I have the ring light there lens through the ring, ring light. The ring light will highlight, will give me exactly the HDR look. Yeah, sure. I'll go back to the image. So you can see everything, like inside. I mean, even the shadows inside. I'm high, look at the eye. You can see that there is a softbox there, and there is a small circle in the eye. Uh, ring light. It's called ring light. So it will highlight fill everything, all the shadows. Which light? The, the, the catch light? Uh, Nakas? No, we don't remove the catch light. Nakas uh, al So why we don't remove the catch light? Because if we remove the catch light, uh, no, it will kill the, the, the photo. Later, if I'll demonstrate, if there is no catch light, you can see everything is dim. There is no life in the subject. The sparkle in the eye, this is what we are looking at. I mean, look at any photos, you'll see that there is almost 90% of any, like, you know, shot, you'll see that there is reflection of natural light or any light source. Okay, clear? We'll demonstrate it. We'll show because usually when we shoot with DC dish, it's very difficult to show the. Sometimes it will be very difficult to show the highlight uh, in the eyes, which is very important, and we'll see the difference. So a uh, few years back, four years, I did the uh, Bulgarian shots in Saudi. It was like you know, eight days of shoots and locations, doing you know, going to location and. Highlight. By the way, this shot done in garage. It's not. Uh, so we, I, I have to create natural light, but we are not driving the car. The same thing with the. It, it's lifestyle with cars. But one of the shots, we went here. Supposed to be some people sitting here next to the car in this desert, and two cars stuck in the, in the desert. 
which uh, all the models there, the lighting and everything. So <laughs> the first production car, we are waiting. Right? Where are you? So everyone was stuck in the desert, and they cannot take out the car. Bad drivers. Okay, so I shot this one. The light was perfect. You can see the highlights from the sun. And we went next day to save the shot, so we, we have time. We finished earlier for the other shot, and we went to the same location. But everything was changed. We put marking and it's gone. So what we did, we placed them and we put the light. By the way, when they send me the photography brief or the request which I received, they will usually, they know the look and feel of the shot. They, they send me that they wanted natural light or like more detailed and highlighted style of the lighting. So more like high-end commercial. And the brief for this shot should be all with lighting and the look of the photos, which is, the references which they send me, it's all, you know, done with lighting. So then with Photoshop, we save the shot and we have it here. And to the car photography. Let's go to car photography. So this shot was done for uh, Bahrain International Circuit, just for experiences. So they want to show, you know, some supercar and super bike for one of the corporate ads. Uh, there is no Photoshop for the lighting here at all. Almost done in one shot. You'll see. Uh, this was how I light the shot. This was 20 by 20 feet light panel. Okay, not everybody should do this. <laughs> uh, and we bounce the light. You can see there's one light here, one light here. Bounce, bounce. So what will happen, this big white giant uh, reflector, it will highlight the car. I mean, black cars are nightmare to shoot. It's like you're know, shooting a big piece of glass. So. We highlight, we change, this is not the final shot, but we change, so we have, maybe we move the light here further away, and we have more highlight here. It depends on the car and the color of the car. So, and we have the same thing we did for the, uh, this is raw fo photos out from the camera. Not everybody sh can show you this, believe me. And the same thing, we change the position of some of the lights, so to get the nice gradient highlights, so the photo will pop. And this was the final one, and we merged, merged them together. So, details, maybe you can look. Yeah. Sometimes we have to, if we don't want the reflection from the floor, we place, uh, you know, black uh, carpet or black fabric. In case if you want to, usually we place uh, black fabric here if we are moving the car by Photoshop into the road. Because the road, you know, they, it's, it's gray. <laughs> okay, now it's more complicated setup. Uh, as I told you, in commercial photography, sometimes they tell, for example, HIPAA will tell me, we need to, show, to do a shoot here. We need all the people to be shown all the details in the faces, all the lights, all the interior. This, maybe it's very difficult to be done in one shot. So I have to take exposure for the background, and exposure for the faces, and exposure for the furniture. Then in Photoshop, with help of Photoshop, we get the final artwork. So let's talk about my first multi-shot composition, this shot. So I, I'd not, I, I mean, this one done five, six years back. So we need to show all the actions happening here. It's for different concepts, long one. So what I did is like sh I shot the background. Then we used soft boxes from like one of them are showing here and from here to highlight this table. Then we have the guy in the background. Again, we use soft box from here for him. Then we're just moving the soft boxes around. So I have three lights. I'm moving them around. Take, and the camera was fixed. 
So we highlight these people here. And the same for the model, we have rim light from the back. And we have another softbox here. We combine them in the, oh. oh let's go back again. And the final composition is this. It's a style of photography. I'm sharing it with you. I hope that you'll enjoy it. Uh, for example, this one was, uh, we don't, we can't bring the big panel for the car here. Low budget shoot. Mainly they want to show the uh, limousine service company. So my assistant was holding the strip top box. So he's highlighting the car. For example, this shot meant to get only this highlight. Only. Next shot was to get the highlight in this area. And he's moving. And we have the line here. Then we took plain shot for, the, for everything seen, background, in case we need to replace anything. And this shot was done, uh, I think you can, there is like, maybe here the light hitting the model. Yeah, first we took a shot for the background, then the car, different shot. And one shot for the model. And this is the final. And we, there is one shot, we just put light for the ring. So always the, you know, the wheels are very important in the car. Okay, this is our final composition. The same thing, this is for uh, hospitality and uh, one of the clients, they want to show the food, the, everything, service. So the same thing we did, you can see there is a softbox here. Inside the softbox, there is a CTO. It's an orange color gel so to highlight the sunset. So they made the sunset color. And we have umbrella here just to fill light. And we have one more light from inside for his back. So once we put light everywhere in some spot, you will look at it. So any photos you have, any painting, first place your eyes will go to it is the highlight area. In this shot, we need, we need you to look at everything. And this kind of shot is for very large prints. It's not for mobile, it's, it's huge. And second section here, we use uh, one softbox from this side. And the second softbox from here. Going back to the waiter, so we have one light here highlighting him. <coughs> People in the background here, so we have two softboxes, one of them for this guy and the other one for the other lady. The same thing, you, you can see here the softbox with orange gel, orange color gel. And this one for the highlighting the hair. And this is the final shot. We replace the sky because we try to get the time that the natural sunlight coming in and it didn't happen. So we need to use Photoshop <laughs> in the right way. Any questions about this one? And for sure, there is color grading highlighting uh, the scene. Uh, now questions and answers before our break. Clear? Yes, there's questions there in the back. Good evening. Good evening. How do you decide on the number of lights and the position of the lights mm -hmm. to create the effect that your customer needs? Uh, w but which effect? You mean the last shot? No, even the other ones. I mean, the earlier ones when you had taken uh, the single one. Yeah, how I can, how I, how I decide the where I position the light and which modifiers. As I told you, first I decide is it hard or soft. Then, what's the effect I need? Sometimes I need just little bit fill light, 
So I will use one light, and I don't have to use the rim light or hair light. So it's all about the concept. Uh, recently, I'm using more like one light in most of my shots. Because what I show you here, most of them are commercial. There is different commercial styles. Uh, maybe two years back, this kind of shot is perfect. But like HDR, things when it came out, everybody's using HDR. Now I'm sure many people will, they don't like the HDR. So for me personally, now I'm going back to more basic shots. Uh, when I decide light direction or I decide which, uh, it depends on the mood, mood of the shot. If it's happiness, I will create highlights, creating 3D look, and I position the light everywhere to highlight each subject. And if it is, uh, you know, uh, standard, I use single light or maximum two. So there is, it, it, it's your call as an artist. And about the direction, uh, think about it like this. I mean, if the light in front of me, there will be flat light. If I'm taking it to the side, it will be more dramatic and more shadows. So I can't tell you uh, that you have to use this direction or that direction. Uh, but think about it. If you are a photographer and you are in the business, you should do something that it can sell. You know, as a commercial photographer, I should create something that my clients are happy with it and me. So uh, decisions depend on the, maybe sometimes my mood. I'm not happy, maybe I can create something sad. Uh, is that clear? Uh, can you ask again for yeah. me? The art example of uh, black and white photography, especially the light effect, how to control it, which uh, I believe it's more challenge in black and white photo. Yeah, black and white. Uh, usually for black and white, if I'm shooting black and white, I always use hard light, strong highlight, and strong shadow. And what is between them? So if you don't have the white point and the black point in black and white, it will be flat. Look at all National Geographic black and white or like, you know, travel photography who's shooting. You can see that there, there is very strong highlight coming from one side and there is black. So in black and white photos, you must see white and black and the gradient between them. If you can't see the white and black, it, it won't be the, the good look of black and white. We'll try to do it, remind me. Questions on the back. Uh, what do you think about LED lights? When do you use them and do you use them? I didn't see any uh, in your photos. LED light is a con continuous light. Uh, most of my shots, you can see there is interaction in the shot. So the people are moving, talking. I can't freeze them in, in, with the LED light. First of all, think about the color temperature. I mean, if you need a good color temperature from LED, you have to buy the expensive one, not the cheap one. So you will have color shift in each shot. You have problem with white balance. This is one thing. Second thing is like in flash photography, you have like, you know, uh, one pulse of light, which is very short, maybe one over 8,000 or 32,000. So it will freeze any motion in this click or in this trigger. Uh, and again, the light quality. LED light, uh, b for me personally, I tried them, and I tried the halogen light before. It doesn't work with me. I mean, uh, quality of the light, it's daylight balance, so you don't have, especially if you are shooting big projects for like, you know, 200, 300 photos, 
and you need to make sure from shoot number one to shoot number 500, they are the same color, the same constant, and you have freeze. You, c you need to freeze the motion, even if it's in studio, model moving, clothes are like uh, flowing in the studio. So uh, you need the, uh, how the studio flash is freezing the motion. And again, the color. And they are not powerful enough, by the way. Uh, 500 watt uh, strobe, you cannot use 500 watt LED and it will not give you. Uh, I don't know, I'm not technical about LED, I don't have any information, but I say 500 watt LED, it's, it's, it's consuming, I, uh, it's throwing 500 watt power, not outputting. It's different calculation. Yeah. Especially if you want to shoot at F11, <laughs> you need maybe 5,000 watts of uh, e light uh, LED. Yeah. Hi. What's usually the focal uh, ratio? Yes. What's the focal ratio that you're using and ISO? Uh, focal ratio? Yeah, the focal. Uh, you mean the, the lens? Yeah. What yeah, the lens it depends. Sometimes I shoot portrait with 24 mm. Sometimes I shoot at with uh, 135. So the lens, again, it's your choice. If I wanted more to be close to my subject, making his face big to the, in the frame, I used wide angle. If I want usually for beauty and portrait, it's always 80 mm and up. And what about ISO? ISO. The ISO, if I'm in the studio, I always try to use the minimum ISO possible in my camera. But remember that if you have, uh, depend on your camera. For example, I use uh, Sony, so the minimum is 100. Mm. So I use 100, so to get the most, you know, native resolution, uh, n native ISO, and this is the highest uh, dynamic range from the camera. And shutter speed? Shutter speed, I will explain later, but shutter speed always in this kind of controlled environment is fixed. So I always, there's something called sync speed with the light, you know? Yeah. So, and Sony cameras is one over 200, so always I put it one over 200. Uh, one over 250 with some kind of flashes, but with studio I prefer one over 200, and I change the aperture and ISO and power. And we are going to display and demonstrate everything A to Z from zero. There is no studio, no setup. We'll do it in front of you. And uh, we need, we can take one more question, one last question before the break, then we have to. Yeah, we have one minute. Uh, in the car photography, what you, in the car photography, what you prefer, uh, the flash or the light painting? Uh, flash or light painting? Light painting. It depends. I mean, the first one which I show you, the one which is uh, light painting is good for location. This one, light painting is good for location because it's easier. If we have big amount of cars we are shooting uh, in fixed location, I prefer to use the, yeah. But all of the, now it's like you can control it's easier to control with hand and paint, but it will be more work later in Photoshop. Thank you. We will come back after 15 minutes with live shoot.
just
trying to download the software. Need to be updated to connect the camera so we can show you the whole thing. Uh, any questions about this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are using, I'll tell you what I'm using till I finish the download of this update. Uh, I'll be using Profoto Lite, they are B1. Uh, nice thing about them, they are like, you know, battery operated. Uh, Profoto B1, B1, yeah. They are 500 watts and uh, I love to work with them because they are uh, easy to move, no cables, nothing, one of my favorites. And I'll, I'll be using uh, Sony cameras. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, this is the main key features which I love Sony. My main cameras are medium format Hasselblad and used to have another brand of DSLR. But technology is changing. And as a commercial photographer, I need to follow this technology. Uh, Everyone is going mirrorless. The future is mirrorless. Trust my word. Uh, you don't have to change. I'm not asking anyone. Uh, it depends. I mean, like, uh, you'd like to drive this car brand or that car. It's up to you. Uh, but I would like to share why I'm using Sony now. They are easy to use. They are like small, much smaller. Uh, shooting from LCD with high performance and autofocus is the key. Uh, they are fast. When I started with the Sony A7R Mark II, uh, it was shooting five frames per second. This A7R Mark III is shooting 10 frames per second. In this model, I have 399 autofocus points with eye autofocus. So, for example, if I'm holding the camera like this or from the electronic viewfinder, which is gorgeous, I can set up the camera to focus on the eye. If the model is moving, I wish I can demonstrate it with you, but we have to have special connection. So if the model is moving left and right, so there is one point is following the eye all the time, continuously. So I'll make sure that I'm having the eye in focus or the face. Uh, the other model, which is A7 III and A9, they have 693 autofocus points. 693. And these points are covered by 96, 93% of the frame. So if it, this is your frame, the model moves to this side, still there is autofocus point following her. Uh, 4K video. I mean, 4K video with S-log and log for format. Uh, everybody now is shooting photo and video in some time. Yeah. I shoot my YouTube channel videos, and still I can use the same camera uh, with a lot of feature: 120 frame per second, slow motion, whatever like options available. It's full frame. It's 42 megapixel, 42.42.4 megapixel, with amazing dynamic range. Very close to medium format. It's full frame. Yeah, look at it. And look at the size. Uh, at the beginning, there was a challenge to shift the system with the new system of the lenses. But now there is options for each, you know, uh, important lens. For example, 2470, there is two versions. There's F4 and 2.8 here. Uh, 70-200, there's two versions, the same. 50mm, 85. 90mm micro, like almost uh, almost now 28 lenses available for full frame. Uh, and uh, the electronic viewfinder is one of my favorites. Uh, if I'm shooting outside, usually in normal DSLR, you shoot and look at the back of the screen to make sure everything is okay. For example, focus on the, your shot. Uh, here, in the electronic viewfinder, which is 3 million pixel, very high res, you can see your shot before, if you are shooting natural light, not in studio, 
you can preview the image and color, uh, exposure, everything before you release the shutter. And after when you release the shutter, you will have immediate preview if you set up the camera in this way, immediate preview inside the viewfinder. So I don't have to, uh, they call it champing, like, you know, <laughs> you don't have to do this. It's, it's a big, big uh, improvement. And they have Wi-Fi, NFC, this kind of connection. Uh, uh, the cameras fully customized, like you have, yeah, the new generation battery life is, is amazing. I mean, I tested this more than, Sony they are claiming 700, but I reached like more than 900 in one shot. Because they changed the battery, and smaller batteries, now we have the Z system. It is much better. And they have the battery grip and other things. Uh, you will see the quality life here. So, while I'm downloading this software, uh, let me just go back to, because I answered the questions uh, previously about, for example, why I'm not using LED light. Uh, I talked about the color, I talked about the freezing and flash duration, and one more thing that you don't have all this light modifiers for LED. Let's say, example, if I want to use uh, softbox, I mean, usually the LED panel is big. Maybe new generation of LED is smaller, but uh, still, the power is not enough to get me and use all this kind of modifier. And let's take, fire up the software. Any questions about the camera? I uh, used to have a uh, cam. Yeah. I didn't face uh, it. There was a problem with the older uh, generation with 4K. I'm going to show you the video. In video recording 4K, but they updated the software and it's better. Uh, with this camera I shot uh, and there was no problem at all. They are, especially the A9 model, it is uh, 20 frames per second, silent shooting, and there is no camera can do what this camera can do. Like A9, but I don't own A9 because I don't shoot, shoot sport. So we need some time to turn on the software. Close the presentation. Asking me to buy the software. <laughs> okay. So I'm buying the software with you now. I own, uh, I use Mac computers. Uh, now I'm trying to connect a software called Capture One. Uh, it, it comes for free with Sony cameras, but if you want to suffer, like shoot remotely, you need to pay some money. And I'm paying you. All for you. Uh, I would love to take questions during this time. Uh, if I compare... I, I don't prefer to judge publicly any camera. It's, uh, in my experience, I'll tell you, I need, I'm getting, yeah, this was the test shot. <coughs> yeah, uh, 
Previously, I did the studio scene for my workshop with, yeah. with Canon, before I own Sony. Uh, I use mirrorless since, uh, uh, sorry, I have to pay. Uh, I'm using Sony since seven years, but it, use, it used to be the older model, which I take it with me because it's light, and it was 1.5 crop in my travel. So it gave me a lot of good quality pictures in my travel. But now uh, I'm, I'm doing uh, commercials with it because we have full frame, we have lighter weight camera, and as I told you, like, uh, I'm able to shoot easily. I'm getting older, and if, for example, I don't have to lean on the floor to shoot low angle. Now just, I hold the camera, swivel the LCD, and shoot. So I'm multitasking now, downloading the software. Questions, yeah? So, no. ايه الفرق بين السوني والنيكون في التصوير؟ اي اي احترافيه من ناحيه الاعتراف؟ ما استخدمته، I didn't use the... But as I told you, it's like driving car, so BMW or Mercedes. Both are good, but what what you are comfortable with it. شنو انت مرتاح معاها اكثر؟ uh, For me, I'm, I'm happy with the Sony. And we got the serial number. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, A7R Mark III, the new one. And there is another one which is uh, A7 III coming, 24 megapixel. Uh, but let me tell you, I mean, for... Uh, So comparing the cameras, uh, I would like to talk about mirrorless. It's a new generation of the camera. Again, uh, DSLR is still there. We can't refuse that uh, there is other brands, but from my uh, you know, knowledge, everyone is like pushing to, everybody is developing mirrorless cameras. Uh, I don't want to make a mistake of the older photographer who refused to go from film to digital, okay? And they didn't catch up with the market and the business. So I always follow the latest technology. It serves my needs and my client's needs. What, whatever is faster. As I told you, I mean, for example, if I'm shooting food, I shoot 45 degree angle and immediately without any rigging or something, I can hold my camera like this and shoot because I have capabilities of looking and get accurate focus from mirrorless. This is the main advantage. So we have the camera connected. We are up and running in the... Okay, how I set up my studio scene? First of all, let me display the... Okay, 
Okay, uh, we have questions, previous questions about how I set up my life. Uh, again, with the new technology, there is Profoto, they have TTL remote for all camera brands. I can plug my remote and click, and it will automatically read the lighting. lighting. But I'm going to today with the classic way, which is the light meter. What is, what, what's, what's the light meter doing? What is it doing? Uh, let me turn it on. So light meter basically, it has a sensor here, light sensor. And I set up my ISO and my shutter speed, which is fixed in the studio. What I need to do is like to set up a shutter speed, for example, 1 over 200 in this environment. I make sure I have black frame. My ambient light is not affecting. And then, so it's here, I'm setting up ISO 100, shutter speed 200, then with, I trigger my flash. I need somewhere to start. Okay, can you come forward? Yeah. Perfect. And we have, So for example, come on. So it's showing me here it's uh, 1.8. So I can't start with 1.8, but I'm not sure. There's another flash working. No? Uh, I increase the power. Uh, first modifier I'll use is the hard light, the reflector, standard reflector. Uh, the light will reflect inside, inside it, and it will direct to my model. So let's set up our first light. We will do different styles. And can you remember what kind of light can create this uh, modifier from my hard or soft? Perfect. It means that you are all listening to me. <laughs> and. With modeling light, which is running now, it's built-in LED, it will show me where I have to direct the light, where is the shadow, and we have light ceiling light that's uh, interrupted. So we'll take it almost straight. And we have it at 3.6, which I don't want. I want to shoot somewhere between 5.6 to 8. Why? Sharpness. I don't want the eye in focus and everything out of focus. So we have the beautiful model with nice makeup, so I want to sh show everything. So you can see how I direct. First thing I do, where I look at the shadow. So this is it. So the power behind it here is showing 4. It doesn't mean it can go up to 10. It doesn't mean 10 is, or 4 is like 5 is half of 10, no. This is 500 watt. Let me explain this. This is 500 watt light. If I reduce it to 9, so what do you think about the power now? How much is it? Hmm? Perfect. Because we reduced one stop. So now it's 250. If we want something in between, we, ha we can go 9.1, 9.2, whatever. But from my experience, I don't need this amount of power. We'll start with 5, and we will read, and we'll see. So it's F8. This will not tell me how to shoot. Uh, what I mean is, like, it's somewhere to start. So, for, for example, if I have uh, light skin tone or dark skin tone, this is, the light meter is somewhere to start, only for me. So I connect my remote, and we have the setting, 1 over 200, shutter, F8, ISO 100. There my reading. And we have cables everywhere. Yeah. We 
can do it wirelessly, but I don't depend. So you look at the camera, grab text, pin down. Now we should have the right exposure. The screen is darker here. I'm going to increase the power a little bit. Just by point, five from five, maybe I go 5.3. Okay, can you just? And what I did here with Sony cameras, there is a button in the lens, which is the focus stop. Yeah, I mean, but I will depend on this one. I will expose to this. Everyone is looking, maybe online. So we have a button here, which I customize it to eye autofocus. So once I press it, it will find the face or the eye. The same thing, perfect. Open mouth a little bit. Perfect. So we are exposing with this screen. Ignore the other one. So now we have one light, which is the hard light. You can see the shadow under the chin and the shadow, especially from the eyelashes. We have small light source, relatively. Uh, what I'm going to do is I will use grid. We have different sizes of the grid. I will use a couple of them because I'm going to change from hard to medium, hard to soft. And we have here that 20 degree. Let's put it down. And for sure, once I use this one, uh, once I use the grid, uh, I need to change my power because this will suck the power out from the flash. You can ask me questions. I think this modifier is bent. I assume that the power will be like Half a stop lower now. Yeah, seven. I increased it. So I want to stay at F8 so everyone will go to F81. Reduce. We try to get the same. Check the background. Uh, remember that she's very close to the background. So if I want to reduce the background light, I have to take her away and change the mode. But we will stay here and we will try to control that by changing the modifier. <coughs> Okay, now I'm using, I'll be using 10 degree. Let's change it. Any questions? And we need to increase it by 0.3. For example, if I have F8 here and I change the modifier and it's giving me F4, how many stops I have to change in the flash? Two. So this is how usually I think. Always how many stops, so I can tell my assistant, for example, he's next to the flash or from my uh, remote control that, okay, give me two stop higher. So once he puts it in two stop, I'm set. Let's shoot. 
Now it's easy, I'm holding the camera. Are you the same director? Where is it? Simple. And now you can see big difference. Just to change, we're changing the Okay, let's do something else. Let's move the direction of the light. So I'm using the same modifier with the same grid, but I want to have more dramatic shots. Okay, we move a little bit. Yes, okay, that's it. So I'm moving the light only just one and a half feet to the side and pointing it to her. You can come back. Yeah, please sit here. Because I moved it, I'm going to increase a little bit of the power. Maybe 0.3. Where's the camera? Thank you. Happen. Too small to find. To be fine. The same thing. Same pose. And we'll take it wider a little bit. Open mouth. Relax. Perfect. So let's see what we did. So with the one modifier, trying to focus. Let's shoot it again. Temples, yeah. I think I missed the focus on the last one. So we have the, the details on the camera. Sorry, usually I don't zoom this amount, I mean with this resolution. But we have a thing, uh, we have one problem here. What is it? We don't have catch light. Let's have some catch light. And check the difference between both shots. Okay? So to have the catch light, we, ha we can do two things. We can move higher with the camera or we can lower our flash. Can we look at, look at the same pose? Yeah, looking at the camera this side. Let's go lower. And it will be more difficult because we have very small light source here. Come down a little bit. Perfect. Open eye. Yeah, I want it to look perfect. So we'll try to let her look at the light, and we have the catch light now. So if we compare this one to this one, about the catch light. A big difference. So there is more life in the portrait. Okay, do you want to continue with uh, the same modifier? Use five. Okay, the question is, can I soften the light? It's, I can reduce the hardness by taking the flash closer to the subject. Uh, if I took it closer to the sub subject, it will 
it will soften the shadow edge, but it will not uh, give you like a softbox effect. Remember, uh, the size of the modifier is too small. That's why we have different modifiers. So we have to use, for example, bigger reflector or softbox. Uh, let's jump to beauty dish. So the setup for beauty dish is like, you know, softer. Uh, it's as famous with, you know, beauty photography. Uh, can we have it? And usually, I mean, you know, lighting uh, diagrams and uh, talking about uh, uh, butterflies, uh, lighting setup, or like Rembrandt, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, details. But today we want to simplify the light shaping. I want it to come just forward a little bit. That's it. Yeah. So in beauty dish, the famous setup for beauty setup uh, usually is the butterfly. Where the beauty dish is like uh, the top directly to the model and it will create a shadow under the nose and under the chin in the shape of butterfly. That's why they call it butterfly lighting. Uh, for beauty dish, usually I don't use it far away because uh, the best light out of it is almost like, you know, a couple of feet or closer to get the softness. So if we come close, uh, usually I make sure that the center deflector here, so the light is hitting this reflector, or we call it deflector, and it will bounce it back to the uh, material here, I mean the dish, and it will highlight the area. So I make sure the center is almost aligned with the face. So this is the, usually before with DSLR, it was very difficult to shoot that, but with Sony, it's like, I can hold it here and shoot. Okay, we'll go. I can't see the catch light is perfectly in the eye, just under the eyelashes. And let's meter it. Is it 90 ml? Oh, no, no, no. no. Around eight. So you can turn your can turn your face toward me, facing your face. This way, turn up. Perfect. So it's difficult angle, huh? Perfect. I'm using twenty four seventy. And this is the result. Again, I'm at F8. I will increase the power a little bit. So, uh, can we have the preview on the other shot, on the other screen, or not possible? Yeah. Okay, let's increase the power. So we are metering the same thing. Perfect. I mean, in the screen here is showing it's amazing as well. But I can do some editing, quick one, which I do usually. So we have the white balance. It's uh, set to, I can't read it from here. It's around 5,700. Okay, 5,100, and I go to the exposure. Maybe I increase the brightness a little bit, a bit of exposure, opening the shadows. 
Uh, no, it's not working. Uh, let's check the forecast. So look at the cat eyes. Uh, for my test, this is the best way to use the beauty right. dish. Just half of it is showing. And we can use the reflector. Um, can we get the reflector? Okay, it's here. Follow me. So usually if I want to, yeah, the thing, maybe here we don't need the reflector. You know why? Because she's wearing white. And the white is bouncing here and filling the shadows. But we are going to use this anyway. Uh, this is one of the famous, the same pose. So I'm using the, sorry. <laughs> Focusing on the close eye, uh, closer to the camera. Perfect. Flash didn't work. One more time. It's loose. Can you not use the hand because we want to show the difference? Okay, one, two, three, pin down. Typical standard beauty shot. Any questions? As using lighting in the studio is not difficult. Don't take it as like, oh, it's a studio, I have to connect this and that. I set up this shot in less than 10 minutes. Actually, I download the software, I bought it, I purchased it, and I shot everything <laughs> in less than 15 minutes. Any questions about the beauty dish? Okay, do you want to see how it will look if I use the grid on the beauty dish? We will have more contrast and darker background. So we are using the 25 grid. Okay, I have to go here. So I'm not changing any direction of the beauty dish. And uh, it doesn't mean that you have to use it in butterfly mode. You can use it from side. And, but when we use the light from the side, remember that if the model turns to the other side, it will be, the, the half of her face will be in the shadow. So remember, sometimes you have to follow the face direction if you want to highlight and eliminate, you know, the makeup or the beauty. Uh, let's meter the light again. Yes. The question is, there is apps for light meter. I didn't try it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't answer this. But uh, yeah, but this one, how, uh, I'll tell you, I mean, how, for the, you need the doom and the sensor. So maybe you attach the sensor. I saw some of the uh, Kickstarter projects about this, but I didn't try it. I cannot comment. There is a problem with the head. See? So I think it's loose. But we will work with it. I need to increase almost one and a half stops to get the same exposure. Thank you. So we will shoot one without the, check the background. This is with the grid. Let's put some fill light. On. Perfect, lovely. I think I need to hold it closer. Here. 
sometimes I use silver, and sometimes I use the white. But uh, again, for my test, I don't like the highlight from, you know, the bounce light to be stronger than the uh, main light or like close to it. It will give me flashlight. I'd love to see some shadows. I love shadows. Questions? No questions. You want to see more demo? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's questions there. Yeah, if you want to make the back background uh, more dark, I mean, like uh, uh, I w the background. Yes. If you w want to make it completely dark. Can you if do I that? want to make it completely dark, and I don't have a uh, smaller light, and I want, I would love to use this one. It's very simple. I, I move her away, like you know. If I move her away, a couple of meters it will be dark. You want to try it? Let's yes, do sir. it. Okay. One more. So I will not change the stop there. Okay. Let's try it. There's a problem with the head. Make sure if you rent any studio lights that it's working. One point six. Yes, no. Light up. <laughs> this is the beauty about the off camera flash battery, nothing there you worry about. We put it in the same setting. Usually I don't do this job. Okay. You know, when you work with the team and you have assistants who's doing everything, you forget about how to open the softbox, which is still simple, by the way. I have to meet her again because I believe the other head of flash is uh, having problem. Maybe the reading will be different. And it's okay. This is, when I talk about in commercial, for example, Profoto brand. Uh, I have all the sh heads as constant in color and flash duration and power. Uh, that's why it's very important. When I change the problematic head with the other one, still it's like reading the same. I just set it up to the same power level and it gives me the right reading. So let's do the little darker background. Which, let's compare it to the other one. So this is the previous one. There is different, but still we need to do it more. So what I should do, can you stand there? Oh, wait, wait. Uh, go back a little bit. I'll come closer, and I will reduce the power. So the power is not enough to reach the background. I didn't take any reading, but I will check now the background, and she's very close to me. You can't see the background is darker. So this is how it works. I mean, like, you know, use grids, uh, move the model away from the background, and you have it. I can get dark background with white, even. But I have to control my light spill and light spread. For example, do the same pose and I'm changing the direction of the light. 
uh, look here. Turn down, and uh, now eyes to the camera. Open mouth. You will see. So by moving the light source, changing the direction, you can get different uh, style of the light. Let's add certain legs. Question? I always shoot raw. I always, uh, he's asking if I'm shooting raw or JPG. My cameras never go through JPG. I want the full potential from the camera I'm using. Uh, especially if I want to change the white balance and get the, most, the details out from the camera. Uh, you can use RAW and JPG so you have ready files, but uh, this is how I'm doing it. So let's do the same shot, but we will add the second light. Let's add the second light. So this is the second light. Let's go there, or from here. And we are, sorry. So we have dark background, so I'm going to highlight her from this side. Uh, we are at very small studio. And as a photographer, for example, I'm here and she's my client and I need to do something nice. So I'm solving a problem here. Uh, can you look straight? Yeah. So I put the light almost to be her, the hair and the chin. And let's move this one here a little bit. Yeah. Turn your face this side. Chin down. So I didn't take any reading. We, got, we are going to change, change it by eyes. Okay, can you do something with hand then? And you have... Very tight space. Okay, no, it's perfect. Okay, one more time. So we, I need to change my framing. But we need the background. I don't want to make it dark. This is the reading here. So, Hamad. Um, what I'm going to do, I will use the third light to highlight the face, the rim light. Plus, I will highlight the background. That's why I'm using softbox. I will use the softbox, so I will spill the light from the background, uh, from her right side. I think it's uh, So I have two backlights. Again, I'm not reading it. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, one tip: if you have a small studio, don't take, don't uh, buy a big softbox, especially if you have, you know, white flooring and white. Uh, ceiling and walls because it will bounce the light everywhere. Here we, are, we have everything gray which is perfect. We can control the light. So the softbox is highlighting here from this side plus it's a spinning in the background. So we will have, I'm sure we will have light in the background. Let's check it. The same pose. I can you move a little bit here? So I'm moving the light so one, two, three. Many people, they like this kind of light. It's good if you have jewelry and highlights. But make sure that the light will not hit the nose and create weird shadow. It's not wrong, but you should control the light hitting the nose. Sometimes from uh, two lights from background, highlighting the nose, it will make the nose bigger and uh, not acceptable visually. Any other more? 
let's use the refactor. Don't mind. Okay, we'll use the uh, no. I'm not using the silver side because it's not silver, it's silver gold. And I don't want to get any color cast in my shot. Okay, very quickly. Perfect. And by the way, it's reflecting the light from the beauty dish, from softbox, from the reflector. One, two, three. And down, perfect. Closer. Use the silver. Let's use the silver. Okay, this point playing the same. Perfect. Thank you. Ignore the color. You can't see it here. Projector will not give you that. I mean, later you can come and look at the laptop, it will give you the. Uh, but you got the idea. This is the most important thing. Okay, let's create ultra soft light. So I'm going to mimic our, like, you know, create window light. Uh, I will use large light source. Uh, but let's use first the soft box. I think we need chair for her to sit. Can we bring the. Open it because we'll use double. You will not see from this side. Can you just come this side because we will reset up the area. And we have it here. Turn off this. So we are turning off this light. Uh, it's okay. I think the chair is working. It's okay. Keep it here. Move the background. So I need you to. Uh, I, I need you to be here and do the pose this time. Uh -huh. So imagine this is the window. So it's highlighting your face. One of my favorite light setup is to use the softbox as the window light. How I can create the softest? I try to get the softbox uh, close as much as possible. So can you move forward? That stop there. So I'm not using the softbox from this side. I'm using the spin light out from the softbox from here. So Whatever it's spinning, this is the softest area from the softbox. So, but we have to turn on this side. Okay. Off. Okay. Let's take the reading. Can everybody decide? And can you face toward me? Perfect. Okay, press 10. classic with this background. See how it's, you know, it's giant catch light in her, in her eyes. And 
if we want to send the light the other side, maybe we can use reflector. 99% of my shop, the front light is only one light. I don't use two from different direction. Uh, it's my personal taste. So if I use two, I use them from same direction to fill the light to the other side. This is how natural light is. Let's try another light from the same direction. <coughs> so just count how many setup we did now in this than one hour. Okay. So we have the power in the softbox is around 6.1. I'm going to use this one at 7. Can you see the screen? No. So this light, now it's reaching the other side of her face and continuing the light with, you know, reducing the shadows. And we are getting, we should get very soft image. No reading, nothing. And this is how we do it. <coughs> you remember my shot, which I told you it's like uh, I did it as soft as possible. Uh, for my test, maybe I will reduce the other one. I want to see some more shadows. So I will reduce like uh, 0.3 and open mouth, open relax. Here. Uh, look at my hand here. Eyes to the camera. Go closer. That's it. This is our hero shot. Okay, let's remove the softbox so you can look at it. So now we are ready for your questions. And if you want to test or try anything, we have five minutes before Q&A. Hey, Yeah. Yes, sir. You mean same direction but bigger? can work. It will give you very, uh, the difference in soft boxes, it's very minor if you move it half feet or one feet. Uh, I prefer to do it like that because I have two sources of the light. I mean, if I want to reduce the shadows here, I can just increase the second one. So it's like, you know, you have one panel with two controls. And this is how I do it. Sometimes even I add light from the back to give me highlight here. So we'll have strong highlight, and then lighting, the less light, so I create like, you know, the uh, three-dimensional continuation of the light. So I learned this from, you know, experience, how to create, because if I hit one light here, it will be very hard, then it will cut, you know? There is like, you know, small transition. I need the transition to be smooth, all over to the other side. So that's why if you have more light, we'll give you more control. Yes? Yes, questions? Okay, the question is uh, how the, the difference between dark and light skin. 
especially they are, they are wearing. Uh, maybe, I mean, by the way, dark skin are really beautiful to shoot, to shoot with. Uh, yeah, uh, believe me. But uh, sometimes I use the, I control it with the grids. If I put the grids here in this uh, top box, I can raise the light so the light will be focused more on the face to light it, light it up, and it will reach less of the you know, white cloth. It, it, sometimes it's just a, you know trying in the set itself. But uh, yeah, depend on the light. But usually I use large salt, and I spot the center on the face. Um, any question? Yeah, people are taking photos of me. <laughs> Come next to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, high key and low key. Mm -hmm. But you are asking if I can create high key and low key? For sure. I'll do one last setup for you. I will create low key with softbox, okay? So if we want to create a drama with softbox, is it possible? Yes, it is. So what I do is like, uh, I move my light, sorry. I move my light to here, facing it to the, ah, oh, perfect. So I'm not metering anything, I will adjust with my camera, if the light is too much, I can't close my lens. I'm not moving my shutter, I'm not moving my ISO. I didn't talk about this, so can you just look at this thing? Yeah, perfect. And now you'll see dramatic shot of our model. Look at it. So I moved it only just one feet, one and a half feet to the back. Yeah. So always, my tip, my advice, if you buy or get studio lights, and if you have two or three, don't switch on all three together. Just use one, use one modifier, uh, master it, change the direction. For example, uh, I used it to the side, it gave me dramatic. When I move it uh, in previous shot to the side, more to the front, eliminate the high, highlight the face with less shadows. If I move it just directly next to my lens, it will be flat. So you choose your style, and why not studio light? Play with it, create your unique look. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for our mother here. Uh, thank you, Hiba. Uh, before we wrap, uh, tomorrow there will be a photo walk. Uh, we will be using Sony cameras, studio lights and location. Uh, anyone is interested, there is 10 seats only. The time is between 4 to 7 in Jumeirah. Jumeirah Hotel? It will be in Jumeirah Hotel. So anyone is interested, we have only two seats. We cannot control. Uh, sorry, 10 seats. Two seats is only me. OK. 10 seats, so register there, and uh, they will register your name and number. Uh, they have to bring the camera? No. We want you to come and experience this little beast. Just bring your SD cards. So you can try the cameras, try the lights and location. It's a completely different story there. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Allah <laughs> <laughs>